Hi, I'm Jeff, the gunsmith at Wyoming Gun Company. In this video, we're going to be going over a trigger job on a Ruger New Model Blackhawk single action revolver. But before we get into that, I'd like to just ask you to like the video if you like it, leave a comment if you've got any ideas for future stuff you'd like to see, subscribe to the channel, and also hit that bell icon if you'd like to be notified of future videos. Alright, so let's jump right on into this. So for this particular revolver, it's a single action. So basically we're going to be honing and smoothing out the interaction surfaces between the trigger and the hammer. We're also going to be replacing some of the components, uh, namely the springs, uh, the main spring or the hammer spring itself. This is a reduced power uh, 17 pound made by Wolf Springs. Uh, the base pin latch spring will be replaced and also the trigger return spring. Um, all of these components will add and contribute to a much crisper, lighter trigger pull and that's much more pleasing and easier to shoot for the shooter. In order to do a proper job, maintain the geometry and the proper angles of all the factory components, I'm going to be using a stoning jig made by Power Custom. This jig will hold the components at the proper angles as I hone and stone the surfaces in order to achieve that light, crisp trigger pull. So the first thing we're going to do is get the revolver in the vise and measure the actual original trigger pull weight just so we have a baseline to go off of and, and kind of give you a before and after comparison. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and uh, strip down the, the revolver completely, give it a good cleaning, and then begin the honing and also replacement of the springs. So let's get to it. All right, so I've got the revolver uh, clamped up in a vise just to avoid any um, human interaction with the trigger itself and the trigger pull weight gauge. Um, and like I just mentioned, we're going to actually measure the, see what the factory pull is on the single action. So here we go. I'm going to get a couple just to get a good average. All right, hit the average button and we're at four pounds, 2.1 ounces. Not too bad for a single action, but I'm pretty sure we can do better than that. Um, so uh, let's get right into stripping this down and giving it a good cleaning. So here we are at our ultrasonic cleaning station. Uh, it's just another service we provide here at Wyoming Gun Company. Uh, this guy will deep, deep clean your firearm and it can accommodate uh, rifle length firearms. Um, normally I don't have to go to the extent of stripping it completely down to all the components like this, but in this case I'm going to be replacing all these springs anyway, so might as well give it as thorough a cleaning as we can. So I'm just going to go ahead and load up the basket and this is some solution made by Infante for ultrasonic cleaning. I have no idea what it is, but it does a really good job. I know that for sure. So anyway, the large parts can go in just by themselves. And then I'm gonna put the small parts that might slip through the wire mesh here into its own little container. This process generally takes about 10 minutes and everything's cleaned up really well. And then we have a secondary tank in the back and that's actually a lubrication tank that will reinfuse lubrication into the steel basically after it's been stripped off by the ultrasonic process. And then just to show you kind of what will happen, so that's filthy with carbon residue. And that should come out spotless again like it's a brand new part.
Okay, all the parts are in. Submerge them. Get all the bubbles out. <clears throat> so we got temperature control and a timer control. I'm running this at, oh, almost 60 degrees Celsius. So it's quite warm in there. And then I'm gonna put it on for 10 minutes. All right, so the cycle is complete. Uh, looks like the parts are nice and clean. Uh, so now I've just got to rinse off the, the Sonic Clean solution and then put it into the lubrication tanks there. So I'll do that now. All right, so we've got all our parts out of the cleaning tanks and back on the bench. Uh, everything's been cleaned extremely well. Uh, most of the carbon has been removed from the surfaces that you'd find on a revolver. Um, yeah, so we're, uh, we're cleaned up, we're lubricated properly, and we're ready for reassembly. Um, first, I'd like to take a second to go ahead and explain what we're gonna be doing here uh, and show you some of the parts that we're actually gonna be working on. So I've got the parts kind of installed on the outside of the frame of the revolver just to show you how they interact because you can't see this when they're actually inside the frame. But uh, anyway, we gotta imagine that this big mainspring's on the back here trying to shove this hammer forward. So as we cock the hammer, the notch on the hammer interacts with the sear on the trigger here. And this little notch holds everything back. So I'm pushing on the hammer itself and it's not falling. So normal interaction, you would push the, or pull the trigger with your finger and it would send the hammer forward, but just like that. What we're gonna be doing is basically just smoothing out this surface while maintaining the angle of the, of the geometry of the part. Because it's very easy, if I were to do this outside of a jig in a, in a steady way to hold these parts, I could get that angle wrong and potentially make this gun unsafe. So as it's cocked, it would just release on its own without any human interaction. So we need to maintain this angle, we need to maintain the sharpness of the interaction between the trigger notch and the trigger and the notch on the hammer. All right, so I'm gonna begin by just putting a little bit of color on the surface that I'm gonna hone. And this will ensure that I'm actually doing an even job and truing the surface instead of cutting a new angle, which we just don't wanna do. So we'll get this in here. <clears throat> and then the first step is actually taking the stone and making sure I got the right angle. So this jig is fully adjustable. And it looks like I need to come down just a bit. Yeah, that's looking good. Couple more clicks. All right, I like that angle. I'm gonna lock it. <clears throat> and then a little honing oil onto my stone. And this is just a medium medium fine grit stone. <clears throat> okay, it's very important to hold the part <clears throat> so that it doesn't move. Some guys will put clamps on these, but I kind of like my fingers because I can feel if it's slipping or not. <clears throat> and then just some nice even strokes. Okay. So, let's see how we see how we did. So the angle's basically right. There's a little variation from the factory produce part because they're not going to this extent to make it perfectly square. But I like what I'm seeing there. The angle <clears throat> that we're paying attention to is back here. So this is where that engages the, the notch on the hammer. And so it's looking like, you know, so this material up here doesn't really touch anything, so I'm not too worried about that. But this all looks nice and flat and square. 
So I'm gonna go a few more passes on this medium fine, just to kind of even everything out. Until that black marker's gone. Even pressure. All right, that's looking nice. I have a little left, <clears throat> just a tiny bit on the corner, but I'm gonna finish it off with the, the fine stone. So make sure my part's in there correctly. <clears throat> Apply some honing oil to my stone. And then we're gonna hit it with the fine. Okay, that's looking nice. A little more for good measure. Again, we're not removing material as much as we're just squaring and truing that surface, making it nice and flat and straight, and obviously smooth. No burrs. Very nice, sharp, crisp corner for that trigger to break off the hammer. Okay, let's go ahead and put it in the jig and test it. <clears throat> and what I'm doing here, I'm checking for ham what's called hammer slip off. So if I got the wrong angle or I did too much, we would be able to push the hammer off of that notch. So there's where it locks up. And now I'm pushing extremely hard, way harder than that spring would ever push. So we know this trigger is completely safe. And then operating as it normally would, brakes nice and crisp, hammer falls forward, under spring it would re-engage, re-lock up, and we're, we're looking good here. So I'm happy with that. Let's go look at it one more time real close. So there's a tiny nick on that <clears throat> very back corner. I might just clean that up while I'm at it, since I'm, since I'm already set up. There we go. I like that better. One last safety check. Okay. We're locked up. <clears throat> that hammer's not slipping off at all. And bang. Great. So I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and uh, reassemble the revolver with all the new springs and give her a good uh, pull weight test and see how we did. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is open up the new springs and get those kind of pre-installed before I proceed with the rest of the revolver. Um, simply just to make sure I got the new springs on the parts and not mixing them up with the old springs. So here we have our reduced power, saying 17 pound hammer spring. So just to kind of compare the two, this spring is the new one, it's the old one. Mm -hmm. Quite similar. Uh, it looks like the thickness of the coils are, is a very small amount of less thickness on the new spring. So that would give us a little less, a little less weight. So I'm gonna put this on the strut, set it aside, take the old spring, put it in the bag. Um, I always make sure to return the original springs and, and components with the customer with their firearm just to make sure if they ever want to go back to factory stock condition, they can. So there's the hammer spring, and then the other two springs, there's really nothing to pre-install yet, but I'll just go ahead and get them out of their packages. And I'm gonna take the old springs and move them. Oh, wait.
I guess this is worth showing. The trigger return spring's quite different. So we've got a little bit different <clears throat> angles and tolerances going on here, but obviously a little bit thinner and should be also a reduced power. So old spring will go into the package. And then the latch spring, that looks basically the same. I mean, there are slight differences. Here's the new one. This one's actually an increased power spring. So we'll set that aside, old spring in the package. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna just go ahead and throw this guy back together and we'll get a weight tested on that and see how we did. Okay, so I've got the revolver mostly assembled all the way. Um, I'm just gonna do a few tests on this before I put the grips on and the ejector housing and all that good stuff. But uh, first I'm just gonna function test it. So cocked, obviously, fires. And a safety check. We're gonna see if there's any hammer push off. There is none. Almost my full body weight on that. I don't wanna push too hard and wreck the part, but certainly not gonna go off on its own. Vibration test. It's good. So let's measure it, see what we've got as far as weight on the new springs and trigger job. Huh, whoa. So there's an improvement here. Let me just do a few to confirm. Oh boy, looking good here. All right, there's four pulls. We have an average of one pound, 6.9 ounces. I'd say that's a pretty good improvement. Now, if this is too light for the customer, I can put back the original mainspring. Um, that, should pull, uh, that should increase the weight a little bit, but I think as long as we set off a cartridge under normal conditions, I'd be, I'd be pleased with that, and I think my customer will be too. So I think uh, I'll just I'll wrap up assembling this, put the rest of the components on the revolver, and we'll go out and test fire it, make sure it fires all six cylinders, and it'll be good to go. Well, looks like she works great. All right, we're back in the shop at the bench. Um, test fire went really well. The trigger feels amazing. Super light, super crisp. Uh, I think the customer will be really happy with this. So this is just one example of the trigger job I can do. Um, most bolt action rifles, um, semi-autos, almost every revolver, Smith & Wesson's Colts, 1911s, um, Pretty much, there's something you can do to improve the trigger on pretty much any gun. Uh, they all vary in design a little bit, but um, kind of the same concept. It's either a matter of honing the surfaces, smoothing things out, and putting lighter springs in, or combination of all that, be that as it may with each particular model. So don't hesitate to give me a, get, a, get a hold of me if you're interested in this kind of service. Um, uh, don't forget to like. Um, Give us a comment, uh, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification if you like to see some new videos in the future. Thanks for watching.